Howdy folks, we are back on the bench today with the uh, Marantz 2220. Today we're going to look at the stereo lamp. So in aux mode, there should be a stereo indicator right here that also comes on when appropriately tuning stations on FM. It should come on only when, uh, when a station is actually in stereo, but it should always be on when it's in aux. So this is a, uh, it's a set of bi-pin lamps that are uh, running this thing. And it's a little bit interesting because if you look at the schematics, it uh, shows that they're in parallel, but in reality, they're in series. So if either one of them burns out, you're not going to have, you're not going to have the light at all. You'll never have it halfway lit up. So let's uh, go ahead and open things up and... Uh, get in and you can actually see what's going on here. Let's turn this so you can see it. So this is what we're looking at here. This is the inputs and these are the two outputs. These are the actual the the pins for the uh the bi pin lamps. And we can do a little bit of testing here and figure out which one is out. Let's put this so you can see it. And then if we turn this guy on, we'll see if we look at, let's see, we look at this one. Okay, we've got uh, 15 volts across him, which sounds like he's probably bad. And then this one, yeah, we got nothing here. So this one is still a uh, pretty much contiguous circuit. So we can do a little bit of testing here. So the uh, 15 volts makes sense. Uh, I want to say these were originally maybe 6 volt lamps being overdriven here a little bit. Uh, I'm probably going to put, uh, I've got uh, 8 volt uh, by pin LEDs. And so I'm going to try those out. And let's see if we stick this guy across, yep, across the terminals, it lights up. So that guy lights up. If we put it over here, yeah, it's not going to light because it's uh, basically shorted by the uh, the incandescent. Actually, no, that's not right. It's not lighting because there's uh, there's no path through the uh, through the first one. But if I use two of them, first one lights, and the second one lights. So I'm not sure you can actually see that, but they are both lit. So unlike uh, most of the other lighting in this guy, these uh, bipins are soldered into this little board here, and there's no really easy way to uh, desolder, or sorry, no easy way to remove them. You have to desolder them. So that's going to be where we go with it. So these two screws here uh, may have a drop of thread lock on them. And uh, so make sure you're using a uh, screwdriver that matches the head well. These are a uh, number two Phillips. If you use something too small, you might strip the head out on them because they really don't like to come out the first time. Uh, after the first time, they're, they're fine. And be careful not to drop these because it's a real pain in the ass to get them back when they fall down in there. Again, don't ask me how I know that. Okay, so I'm not really sure what the uh, the best route to approach this is. I actually might just try to uh, I might put this one of the screws back in, have it stay in place, and then see if I can remove most of the solder with some either wick or one of the desoldering 
little vacuum pump dealios. Have to be really careful here about uh, not touching the string with the soldering iron. Actually, I might, yeah, I think I'm gonna actually take this off. You can see a little glob of uh, Loctite on this too. But yeah, we're gonna get this out of the way so I don't risk touching the string. So, okay, we are going to carefully set that up out of the way. And then because of how uh, kind of in vivo this is, I'm gonna use the, uh, I'm not even gonna mess around, I'm gonna use the uh, good solder wick here. that our bad one had uh, a poorly connected pin. All right, so the, uh, the LEDs that we're using here are eight volt bi pins from uh, our good friend Joe. These are non-polar and uh, pretty much already set up to be drop-in replacements here. So if you're gonna use you know, kind of bare leads. There's a lot more work you've got to do around, you know, resistor circuits and things like that and rectification and all kinds of fun stuff. But uh, I would really advise you just get something that is good to go. And uh, I will link to uh, Joe's stuff down below. Um, another thing I'm going to do here, just because it's the right thing to do, not because it actually really has to happen on uh, this version, is because these are in series, if you were using standard LEDs, you'd want to make sure they were uh, pointed the same direction. And you can see that you've got uh, kind of one thick post and one thin lead. So that gives you your uh, polarity it were it something that mattered. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to trim the, uh, I'm going to trim the leads down here a bit because I don't need that much sticking out. All right, and you can hopefully see here that I uh, bent the uh, leads of the pins a little bit there just to uh, hold the, hold the uh, lamps in place until I can come back and get it soldered in. So now, put one screw back in here to uh, hold this in place. And I'm not worried about these two center tails potentially touching because these are actually connected together on the uh, PCB. This is the uh, the series circuit here. Yeah, current comes in here, goes to here, goes across the lamp, and then these two are connected together, goes across the lamp and back out. shorts real quick. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> That's what we expect to see. So let's test it really quick before we put the uh, string back where it goes. Plug it back in. Is, uh, as a note, in case you happen to be the kind of person who likes to live on the edge and you work on things plugged in but not turned on, uh, this is not one of the scenarios where you want to do that. <clears throat> uh, 
the uh, lamps always have power and what is switched is ground. So when you're playing around with it, even though the lamps are off, they are powered. So you don't want to be sticking your soldering iron or your, uh, your uh, cleaning wick or anything like that on there. So anyway, let's uh, fire this thing back up and see if our lamp works. There we go. All right, that is on. And let's uh, hook up an antenna and see if it works in uh, FM mode. So when you're putting this back on, there's a little pin that you can barely see here. Station, station, no station, station. All right, I am pretty happy with that. Um, if anything, the uh, only little thing I would uh, change, and I may, I may talk to Joe about this and see if he's got anything that is uh, even warmer colored. That uh, the light has a little bit more of an orange tint to it. Uh, I really like the. Uh, I like the red. I'm wondering if he's got uh, bi pins in red, so I may uh, may look into that um, just to you know try and line up the colors a little bit differently. But the the orange really isn't too bad here. And one of the things I'm noticing between the uh, between the the two of these uh, 2220s that I've got is the uh, even with the same LEDs, the color across the dial is a little bit different. Um, I'm wondering how much of this might just be. Uh, different color fade on the uh, on the uh, vellum behind. I may uh, may look into uh, you know getting like some gel filters or things like that to try and uh, get some more consistency across there, or you know maybe I won't. We'll we'll see we'll see what's interesting in the future. But yeah, pretty happy I got the uh, light here working, and uh, that's you know one more thing that we can knock off the list. So next time around, we'll be digging into probably the, uh, the static problem. So that's going to do for today. Thank you as always for watching, and we will see you in the next one.